Collaboration is a topic that has fascinated me for many years already, professionally and beyond. It is something that in many organizations a lot of people talk about, yet it is not common. Uh, whilst many people understand it conceptually, what it means to collaborate successfully, it is a lot more difficult to put it into practice. And this is why I expect this topic to keep on fascinating me for years to come. It is May 1848, after the first democratic elections for Germany, Parliament assembles in this building, the Paulskirche in Frankfurt am Main. They spent an entire year of intensive debate to achieve the constitution for the German people. For instance, they decide that the colors of black, red, gold shall be the colors for Germany and its flag. Parliaments make use of a great ability of people to collaborate with each other in peace even though they may have very different interests and very different ideas. Rolf Pfeiffer, managing director of Frankfurt-based Leadership Choices Group, will share with us his professional experiences in best practice leadership and best practice collaboration. Successful collaboration is of particular importance in organizations that work in competitive environments. Um, in organizations where this is very visible is where the practice of leadership and the practice of management need to come together and uh, support each other in a good balance. Uh, the definition of leadership uh, for this matter is that uh, the organization will do the right things where management is about doing these things in the right way. We owe this to Peter Drucker, the uh, preeminent management thinker in the 20th century, and uh, let's work with this rather simple but yet effective uh, definition. Leaders and organizations can easily be aware of this balance, leadership and management, and um, conceptually this is rather easy to understand what it means, how to do the tasks of a leader and the task of a manager effectively, um, it is at the level of the actual behaviors that this very often diverges. When leaders in an organization work effectively, they will create collaboration at all levels in the organization. It will be part of the, the system of a firm. Um, and we're going to look at a simple model that has been developed and is proposed by the Center for Creative Leadership a uh, globally active organization that helps leaders to become more effective and organizations to be more successful as a result. And the uh, model they propose is composed of three elements. It's about setting direction, it's about creating alignment and ensuring commitment. Let's look at all three elements in a little bit of detail to give you an overview. Setting direction is about a vision for the organization, a mission that it sets out to achieve, and the, the strategy that is the, the do's and don'ts for the organization. The uh, things the organization is going to, to do, the products or services it is going to offer to its uh, clients or customers, and also about the things that it's not going to do. The second element, creating alignment, is very much about helping people across the organization and throughout the organization to understand the direction. It's uh, about ensuring that people will know their place, uh, their role, how their work will support the achievement of the organization's objectives. In the third element, uh, ensuring commitment, very much is about inspiration, about energy, about motivation, about drive that will help people in the organization uh, day to day to do their work, to work with each other, support each other to achieve what otherwise could not be achieved. Let me illustrate the concept of direction, alignment and commitment by an example that I have experienced uh, firsthand myself. 
This happens in an organization, a specialized pharmaceutical company by the name of CSL Bering, a global leader in the plasma proteins industry. Um, plasma proteins are uh, pharmaceutical products that um, help to create blood clotting where it doesn't exist and uh, on the other hand can also help to reduce blood clotting where there is too much of it. And this organization underwent a major restructure uh, a number of years ago and um, the management team of the organization used, without actually knowing about it, the three components direction, alignment and commitment to help turn around the firm. Setting direction was specifically supported by a clear statement around the five major strategic descriptors of the industry. The five things that the organization would strive to focus on and do in order to support the success that it was aiming to achieve. Uh, these were put into one slide, literally one slide, that was included in a lot of presentations all throughout the organization at all levels and uh, people would basically not be able to escape the uh, five points that were important for strategic success. At the next level, um, creating alignment around this, the senior team would engage in a a whole range of conversations and discussions and, and meetings and, and workshops with people at uh, every level of the organization and in all parts of the organization to discuss what these five strategic imperatives meant for people in these particular functions. How they would translate these imperatives into their contribution for the organization which if you look at a sales or marketing department can be greatly different from what it means to a research and development team. The third element of ensuring commitment um, was particularly supported by an initiative driven by the sales and marketing organization where they would invite patients using the products and uh, patient interest group representatives to come into the organization and engage in, in presentations and, and meetings and dialogue with employees from all parts of the organization so that everyone could connect their work they do, whichever that consisted of, to the, the actual lives, survival and quality of life of visible individuals. So everyone was able to make that connection and um, it is easy to understand that uh, this was the type of motivation that everyone needed and that everyone used to actually give their best. And the result was that after uh, a rather short period of time, the organization would collaborate much better and as a result um, become the clear leader in its industry. You might wonder what makes collaboration, in particular successful collaboration, so demanding. Um, well, the work that my colleagues and I are doing uh, every day uh, suggests that a, a lot of people, a lot of managers and organizations actually do have a pretty good understanding of what it means. That's the conceptual level we have um, spoken about earlier. Um, then when it comes to putting that into practice, it becomes just a little bit more difficult. Um, and let me try and ex give you a number of uh, perspectives uh, maybe even a number of reasons why, why that is. Uh, the first one being that uh, every firm will have uh, an, an organization, um, a hierarchy, uh, structures, org charts, uh, people knowing who they work with, who they report to, and um, we all know that this is the first thing that we see when we look at an organization. Can I have an org chart please? That is a statement that uh, basically every consultant will, will use when starting uh, an engagement. So we look at the, the structure and uh, this is also at an emotional level what the people usually adhere to, uh, what builds their identity. I am a member of this function, I am a member of that team. All of those are structural elements. At the same time, 
Customers of the firm will buy products or services that are results of processes. Now, processes have a different nature, while structures tend to be stable, or tend to even demand stability, processes are synonymous with flexibility. And there you can easily see how this can be difficult and demanding for organizations to achieve. On the one hand, people will want stability. At the same time, what clients are asking for are products that need flexibility. And bringing stability and flexibility together at once is by no means an easy task. It will only work if there is superior collaboration in an organization. Secondly, very often when we compose teams or we, we staff uh, departments, um, we're looking at uh, educational background, experience, knowledge, um, having worked in certain environments, uh, at what I would call the, the hard facts of a CV of a, a person. Um, what we always find uh, in organizations is there is another factor, which is the personal preferences of people, their characteristics, their, their, their character, who they are, not what they do. So in some respect it is a conflict between uh, what people do in organizations, skills, knowledge, experience, and so forth, and who they are as individuals. Um, and this is another way to look at something that uh, Ron Meyer has mentioned earlier when speaking about diversity. Uh, and I'm not just looking at diversity in terms of uh, gender or color of hair or native language or the other usual descriptors of diversity. I'm also looking at things such as how do you like to interact with other people? Um, do you enjoy large groups or small groups? Uh, what is the type of speed that you're looking for in an organization? Do you rather tend to be very organized uh, early starting or uh, last minute pressure prompted in the way that you work? Um, do you tend to accommodate situations as they are and try to make the best out of it or are you the challenger who wants to create new perspectives, new ways and basically says, you know, tradition is great but then it will not, might not help solve our problems so let's look at something new. Are you rather implementing things or would you rather like to develop new things? So all of these factors are part of who we are. Um, some of which can be influenced, some of which are rather stable, and they play an important role in how people collaborate. Uh, they're usually not part of a CV, uh, they're a lot more difficult to detect and understand, and therefore much more of a source for non-collaboration. The, the third element I would like to highlight that we see quite often is how people actually understand their roles, their, their contributions, what the jobs they're doing uh, mean to them. Um, very often these are topics, these are discussions that are not being heard officially and um, yet even though these discussions are not being led, even though this might not be clarified, it is at work. So in other words, uh, quite often it might be that People have different understandings of their role, different ambitions, different intentions, different motivations, uh, different reasons why they go to work. And all of these differences usually have a very important impact on how people actually collaborate. Effective leadership is one way to ensure superior collaboration in, in teams, in firms, in, in organizations. And the uh, question that many people then ask is, uh, are leaders born or are leaders made? Well, if they were born, we wouldn't be sitting in this program altogether. So, yes, they are made to some extent. Now, a lot of the things that make effective leadership can actually be learned. At the same time, it is very difficult to teach them. So, learning goes by experimenting, by experiencing, by trying new things, uh, also by failure. And um, it is something that most successful and effective leaders have actually gone through. In closing, I would like to encourage you to work with these concepts, uh, to apply these concepts, to see how they function in your uh, teams, 
with your program peers. This is a great opportunity for you to see how things work, how they work for you, how they work for others. And without the uh, potential damage to existing relationships in the workplace. So this is a, a no risk, uh, try everything zone. And I would like to encourage you to make good use of that. Uh, capture as much feedback as possible and um, while doing all of that build your skills become a more effective leader and enjoy this journey thank you very much